Um, welcome back to Secret Origins at the Emerald City Comic Con. Our next guest is Sir James Robinson. Come on up, James. <laughs> You have to put your own, try not yes. to sit on it. Oh, your mic is bigger than mine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> These are nice chairs. They are. I brought them myself. Do you like? I upholstered them actually earlier today. Oh, really? From, yeah. uh, from a unicorn skin or something? <laughs> so how has your con been so far? Uh, so far, wonderful. I, I, I love Seattle. So uh, this is the second time I've done the convention. And it's always a pleasure, you know, and, and it's obviously everyone that's, uh, that's, that's been to this convention more than once can see that it's certainly grown this year. Mm -hmm. But it's, there's still that mellow vibe, which I like. You know, I was, we, we, all, we all know like San Diego can become a bit of a, sure. uh, a, 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 a meat grinder. So this is much nicer, much more pleasant. And I think, I think it, it, it rubs off on the, the, the fans and the people that come. They just seem much, much nicer and less like fran frenzied. So. <laughs> And so when you do a con like this, is it, um, is it mainly outreach to you know, your readers where you get to meet them in person? Or is it um, seeing the, the other things that people are working on, your peers? What, what's well, your favorite it's, part? Well, it's it? a bit of all of that, really. It's, it's, uh, it's you know, m meeting my fellow creators. Um, but I, was, I, was, I have a reputation for being a guy that enjoys a drink. <laughs> and uh, so at, at night, I always, in, every morning I wake up like, oh, why did I stay up that late drinking and everything? Um, but there's that. There's definitely, it, it's wonderful to meet, to meet the people that read your books because on the, on, on the internet, all you get is, well, not all, it's not all you get, but you get a lot of negativity. And it can really kind of weigh you down if you, if you pay attention to that stuff. Whereas, you know, nobody... Nobody brings a book for you to sign and says this is crap. They, you know, they, <laughs> they, 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 they brought that book in, and especially some some people that are on a plane. Um, there was one guy that brought all his all the Starman omnibuses. Yeah. That's a lot of weight to to, to schlep in. Right, I think right. was, he was from Atlanta or somewhere. So it's a lot of, of weight to, uh, to 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 take the time to put to pack in your luggage. So you know that means a lot to me. These people, you know. So that's partly it. And then. Um, Obviously, you know there there are sometimes announcements that that you mm -hmm. you're here for, you know, to be a, be a part of as well. Mm -hmm. with, when you work for DC or Image or any of the companies, mm -hmm. so it's a mixture of all of that, really. But this time you're not doing an announcement, right? Uh, I was supposed to announce something, and it's okay. it's been delayed. So there soon there will be an announcement in a few months. Okay. Um, but we uh, can break here. There's an announcement of an announcement. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, so so yeah, it was just you know t talking to. Uh, you know, do, uh, working out some things. It's it's also really nice. You know, Dan DiDio is a very uh, busy guy, obviously. So it's nice to get some face time with him, mm -hmm. and which I was able to do as well. So that that, that was a, a, a nice part of today. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, pitching ideas. Um, there was what there's one idea I pitched him. I can't obviously I'm not going to say what it is, but <laughs> pitch me. But but uh, <laughs> but uh, Eddie Beganza and, and and Mike Cotton, who's my editor. And, and my group editor is, is Eddie, I was like, Dan, he's never going to agree to that. <laughs> and of course, he was like, yeah, that sounds a great idea. <laughs> so, uh, so, 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 so that, that's one of the benefits of coming here. And then, you know, just, as I said, socializing, meeting people, uh, and just enjoying the city, too. It's a nice, it's a lovely city to come to. You know, I had uh, sushi two nights in a row. Fantastic sushi in Seattle. Can you have a pho? What's that? A pho, Vietnamese beef soup. Oh, um, I haven't... Okay, I will, I will, I will, I will think of, I will remember that. Yeah, thank you very much. How long are you in town for? Uh, sun, I go, I go back on Sunday. Well, you better get there quick. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh. Okay, so, um, so tell me a little, you're working right now on Earth 2? Earth 2, I'm, I'm working on Earth 2, mm -hmm. I'm developing something else for DC that I can't, that that I can't, we can't, talk, can't about. talk about. And then um, I'm also writing a image book uh, which, with Jay Bone that will be out. I would. I don't know the exact time date it will be out, but I would imagine it's somewhere around. Um, I'd like it to come out in the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we announced it last year at San Diego, and I hate when you when there's an announcement and then the book isn't out by the following right, San Diego. Right. So that's my personal goal is to get the book out by then. And Jay is doing a Rocketeer at the moment, uh -huh. so he's busy with that. But when he's done with that, he's going to and he's pretty fast, so that, I'm, I'm not worried about it. And so is the script all done? Uh, I'm working on the script at the moment. You know, I have I'm sort of j j because he's had this other job. I haven't had to think about it as much. But now I realize I have to start getting back on board. I've written like two, two of the issues and I need to get it's only five issues. 
mm-hmm. with the idea that if people respond to it, then there'll, there'll be more, more, there'll be little arcs as opposed to a, an ongoing story. Mm-hmm. It's called The Saviors, and it's a um, science fiction kind of horror comic. Um, it's sort of, it's, it's a cross between uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers and, and John Carpenter's The Thing. Oh, wow. uh, but and I'm, again, I'm borrowing a little bit from a like Walking Dead and also Tim Burton's Mars Attacks. You should not get attached to any character. Any character can mm-hmm. die at any moment. So it's 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 fun in that way too. I hope. Mm-hmm. But it's limited to five issues. Well, it, five, it's it, the first arc is five issues, and then okay. and like I say, if it's successful, then we'll do another five issues and another five issues and build on build upon it. Now, how do you feel about? It seems like kind of a recent trend about not uh, having you know being willing to kill off any main character, um, especially in some creator-owned stuff. But you see it a lot in The Walking Dead and Game of Thrones and stuff like mm. that. Is that something that, as a writer, you know, I, I feel like there's always a mixed reception from the audiences where you're trying to introduce new characters to, to capture them with. Um, have you, have you, do you have a sense of where the line is before you'll kill off a character? Well, I think it's instinctively how you feel. I've, I got such... A, 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 a negative reaction to when I killed off Liam, Liam Harper, mm-hmm. um, which I wasn't even my plan. It was it was something that, that I was asked to do, um, and now at DC especially, the rule is if a character's dead, they're dead, mm-hmm. so they can't be resurrected. You know, in the way that characters come back all the time right. in, in, in comics, you, you were used to. So with, with those two things, I take it very very seriously now. But with with a book like uh, The Saviors, I can. I can have fun with that that idea, uh-huh. and so uh, what what will happen is, you know, as I'm writing it, I'm like, this is about the time when this character should should die, or would it be shocking if at this moment, when you think there's so much ahead for this character, that's when they die? Mm-hmm. So I think it's on a case by case basis in terms of the book you're writing. Um, I certainly don't feel I, I, I I'm enjoying that aspect of it with the saviors, whereas I, as I say with the team books, I'm really trying to to not to to not kill anybody anymore mm-hmm. unless I have to, <laughs> but I'd, I'd kind of rather not. Mm-hmm. But, but looking at the saviors, mm. you go into it with the sense that all these characters are mortal and can be killed. Yes, yes and, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And is that a different, um, is it different to start a comic book that way as a writer? Um, do you get less attached to them? I, 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 I do get attached to them because I feel if you're going to kill a character, you've got to make that character, it's, if, you, if, you don't, if, you, if the character, if people don't care about the character before you kill him, Mm-hmm. Then, then the character is just fodder, mm-hmm. you know. It's, it might as well be a faceless background extra. So I find that, as opposed to going into it not caring as much about this character because I know it's going to die, I actually care about them more because hmm. I try and make what they what happens r- resonate. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yes, so that's that's where I am on on, on killing characters. Mm-hmm. And we've talked a little bit about you know announcing announcements and stuff like that. What, what as a creator, you have. A new book coming out that was announced last summer at San Diego. Is it helpful to the book to to do an announcement at a con, even if it's going to be pretty far out? Uh, I, I'm not the right, right person to ask. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do think that sometimes you know you have to plan it right. You know, I mean, it, the book is out now. I'm I'm, I'm honest about these things. Uh, I remember when Tony and Tony Harris and um, I might have gone blank. What's his name? Which book? Uh, uh, B. Clay Moore, Whistling okay. Skull. Mm-hmm. That was announced like two years ago. Right. And it's, it's out now and everything's fine, but I remember thinking, wow, they announced that too soon. Mm-hmm. So I don't, uh, but, but you know, at conventions, things get attention. Mm-hmm. Whereas it, if they're, if they're if, unless you are very good at it, if you announce something just on, a web, on the websites, it can, can, can be completely slipped under the radar because that's the same week that they killed Robin, or they, right. or they, or they're launching a new Avengers book, or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so, I, I don't really know, and that's something that I guess a company knows. But you know, if if I'm if I'm at a convention and things get announced, then they get announced. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so also you're working on Earth Two. Yes. What's that been like? Um, well, ch- good but challenging. I mean, like every th- this is one of the things that. That Jeff Johns is always talks to me about, and 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 is the one thing about the new Fifty Two is you cannot reintroduce these characters twice. You, you, so, <laughs> you, so you have to make sure when you do it, you you do it right. And 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 uh, I think if you look at the across the board, uh, the line, 
there are some some books where they've done a great job of reintroducing characters, and other times they've just done a terrible job. Mm -hmm. um, so, bringing you know these these characters, these old these old golden age characters, they still matter to people. They still resonate. In, 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 so, and the job I tasked myself, which was to reintroduce them as young young people, but inherent to have the, the same inherent personalities, mm -hmm. and be be true to who those characters were in their 1940s for, you know, hiccups. Um, uh, the, the personalities, what they what they used to be. Mm -hmm. um, it, I have to. Re I really. Tr I'm trying to take my time and make sure that everything is is right when I do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with Jay Garrick, I took I took great pains to make sure, making this really likable, brave, sincere young man, mm -hmm. which to me was the epitome of what he was back in the 40s. He was always the, that bright face, mm -hmm. that energy and and, and and humor. You know, Alan Scott was always this type A personality. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a, he was an engineer, and then he became a reporter, and then he ran the ran the he owned the the, the broadcasting company. So I wanted to have that sort of dynamic mm -hmm. personality, and, and as you see, as I as I introduce other characters, um, when, when when you finally meet Wildcat, he's going to be a modern version of of what Ted Grant was, but they'll still be the essence of that character. Mm -hmm. So it's been challenging, and the other thing is, you know, as I said in the the DC panel today. I'm laying the, the seeds now more so for eventually, obviously, Earth 2 and the main Earth are going to meet. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, and this is, you know, this isn't a, a hard, fast time frame, but approximately the end of next year. So even though that seems a long way off, I, I've got to start setting all of that up too. Sure. So that means there's a lot of talking with editorial. So it isn't like with Starman, I would just write what I wanted to write, mm -hmm. you know, with... Um, with a lot of books, you know, I just was 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 pretty much left to my own devices. This one, there's a, there's a lot more uh, s s editorial support. Sometimes editorial interference. Mm -hmm. Sometimes support. It depends, you know, mm -hmm. from one thing to the next. But I'm enjoying it, and the fact that we have Nicholas Scott on the book, and um, she said she wants to stay on for like two years. She wants to stay on right through till we we we, we meet the other Earth. Mm -hmm. So I do always think that a book that has um, an artist, a, a stable team mm -hmm. that you know is going to be there. It makes you enjoy the book more and 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 uh, and uh, 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 sorry and, and connect with the book more. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, you know when there's a constant shifting artists, right. I, uh, there's a disconnect. F at least for me, mm -hmm. you know. And so, what's it been like um, going from books where you have carte, uh, sort of carte blanche onto something where there's more interaction with it, editorial? Well. Is it difficult to navigate? It, it can be a bit frustrating, but at the same time, you know, if you do it, if it, if it comes out and it's good, it, there's a there's a reward. There's a you, you feel creatively. You, there's a reward in your heart for what you've done. Um, it, uh, I, I I prefer having the focus than when I was when I was writing the Justice League of America. Um, it was it, it it sold you know quite quite well, but it wasn't the focus of the DC universe. The focus at that time was Green Lantern books mm -hmm. and the Batman books. Basically, what, whatever J Jeff was doing or what Grant Morrison was doing. Mm -hmm. And your big team book should be the focus of, of the universe. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 not, if I'm writing it, whoever's writing it. You know, the Avengers should be the focus of the Marvel universe. The, the Justice League should be the focus of the, of the DC universe. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. So even though I had more freedom, it was very frustrating. With, with, this, with this book, there's a lot of attention given to it by by the edit editors because they obviously they want this to to, to be a, a success and and also we're building towards something. But I would rather have that than just be to not matter, you know. Right. And and you, you could tell with any line of within in any company, DC, Marvel, you can see the books that are just there existing, mm -hmm. and then the books that that are, they genuinely there's somebody you know caring about them. Mm -hmm. So it's so 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 that's nice. And I think um, uniquely, you have worked both in Hollywood and in comic books. Yes. Um, uh, obviously, you have to deal with a lot of notes and executive influence on screenplays. Is it the same thing, or is it different with the editors? It's it, it is it's it's different uh, because if you have if you write a script and you have an accord with your artist and your editor, even if they're giving you notes. I mean, there are never that many notes, honestly, in a comic book. Mm -hmm. um, what what you write in your script is pretty. You can you can imagine what it's going to be, and it's pretty much going to be that. Mm -hmm. When you write a script for Hollywood, it could be 
you could be rewritten by someone else. Mm -hmm. It could be, I mean, like for, for instance, you know, one of, the, one of the scripts I'm genuinely, genuinely proud of is the original version of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And then and it was, it's a completely different, it, 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 it literally would be like writing Star Wars and then, 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 then you're told, no, we're gonna rewrite it and it becomes James Bond or something. Mm -hmm. It's so different. Mm -hmm. And never knowing what the finished thing is gonna be mm -hmm. and having so many different people. And, and as we were saying um, before, when we were just talking off, off camera earlier, in Hollywood, there are so many people, who, there are so many idiots who feel they have to justify their job. They have to justify their job by having an opinion. Uh -huh. And sometimes you don't, if it's, if it's good, you don't need to fix it. You don't need to pee on it like a dog, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that, after a while, just wears you down. I mean, I, I was, I've written, uh, I've, I mean, I've only had one, one movie. Oh, actually, I've had two movies made because I, I wrote and directed a, a low-budget movie. Mm -hmm. Comic but, book heroes. Comic book villains. Villains, sorry. Um, but, I've, but League of Legends was the only movie I, I had made. And, but I've written for Hollywood probably 10 films. Mm -hmm. And just the, some of the notes and some of the producers and the creative executives, it, it just, it, it's, it's just a bit soul destroying. Whereas with a comic, like I say, you, you have, you, you know, obviously the money's not, not as good, but you do have a degree of, at the end of the day, you have this thing that you've, that you've written that is pretty much what you intended it to be. It's there mm -hmm. on, on the page and no one's coming and rewriting you or, mm -hmm. you know, or any of that too. I, I, I always, I, I was, I've always wished, you know, in, in films, if they did, if, it, if there wasn't so much money to be made, if it was like being a sculptor or a, you know, a glass blower where you, you really do it for out of the love, it isn't because you're going to become a millionaire. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 I bet you there'd be about 30% of the people in films would still be in films and the rest of them would all be in de dental school becoming right, sure. dentists or something. <laughs> so, 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 so that's part of the problem with working in Hollywood. But I still would go back and do more in Hollywood at some point. I just needed to take a break. And now you started in, in film or in comics? Where was your I initial? went to film school. And what that taught me... Where'd you go? Uh, a Polytechnic Central London, which sounds crap, but it's, it was actually one of the better degree <laughs> courses. Polytechnic oh, Central London, right? Yeah, but it, it was actually one of the, the better uh, degree courses in, in England. Um, ow, ow, ow. Sorry. You're right, dude. No, I just I hurt my leg yesterday. And I've got you a rub? What's that? I was offering to give you a rub. Oh, no, I just no, want sorry. to get you through the... <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, so w the, the one thing it, that it, it did was it taught me... Um, there's this science of storytelling called semiotics, which mm -hmm. is the study of, of the different forms of, 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 of how you communicate. And it, you distill it down in terms of, you know, the language of, of vocabulary. Uh, there's, and there are, there are definite things that you do when you're, telling a, when you're t making a movie as opposed to even, you know, a, a book or... I, I mean, it seems logical, doesn't it? You know, they would be different, but it, it, they, semiotics breaks that down and really analyzes it piece by piece. It was the most boring course in the world, mm -hmm. but what it did teach me was how to how to try kind of analyze comic book storytelling because mm -hmm. this was at a time when there weren't the Scott McCloud book wasn't out, okay. and and Eisner had, I think had done his books by that point, mm -hmm. but Eisner's books were were more like these are my tricks. Mm -hmm. it, there wasn't how do you how do you tell us tell a story, right. um, so. I had to sort of teach myself that, and it was learning semiotics that helped me to analyze stuff. You know, look at how Frank Miller does things, and you know, no, no one teaches you. Oh, you gotta, you gotta work, work down the page and turn the page for that moment, and all those kind of mm -hmm. things. Inherently, you you work you work them out. So that made me, I think, going into the game a little bit better at, at telling a story, mm -hmm. having studied that. So I wrote London's Dark, which was the first thing I I, I had published, and. In the, in the course of getting a solicitation, or not solicitation, could be like at the back, you know, uh, what do you call it? You know, when people say, I love this book, you know, okay. Stephen King or whoever. Right, right, right. Um, I got it to Matt Wagner and he read it and he, at the time, he was gonna take a break from Grendel. Mm -hmm. And this was when it was at Kamiko. So he, oh, wow. he said, um, the, the plan originally was he was gonna take a break after issue 40. I don't know if you guys, any of you read Grendel, but, uh, 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 take a, a break after issue 40. My series, Four Devils, One Hell, was going to be next, and then oh. he was going to come back with War Child. Oh, wow. But then Kamiko went bankrupt, 
They partly owned Grendel, so it took a long time legally to get, get it away from them. And Dark Horse got it. And by then, he's like, look, if I have to do War Child first to relaunch the whole idea, and right. then we'll do your series. Mm -hmm. um, what's an interesting little sidebar, if, uh, for people that, that have read it, the, art, the beautiful artwork by Teddy Christensen. Originally, I, there, are, there are two and a half issues of the same story with art by, by Philip Bond, who was the original, the original, you know, that did uh, Kill Your Boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just, it's, it, I mean, I'm the only one that's ever gotten to see it, but it's interesting how wow. two artists, very different styles, both excellent artists, right. uh, and, and Philip wasn't available when, when the rights came up the next time. But it's interesting to see how two artists can tell the same script mm -hmm. differently. And both of them were beautiful, but different. Right, right. Um, what did you take away from that? Did you learn something? Not really. Okay. Uh, but, but, um, <laughs> but, well, except... Well, learn that, that just how, how interesting it is to see your script reinterpreted. Right. I should find, <coughs> I should find the, the, the pages. They're in, they're in storage somewhere. How many pages was it? Two and a half did? issues. Two and a half issues, jeez. So that, as a, in, in as a collection with the actual the Teddy Christians and stuff, I, would, I think everyone would find that interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where were we? So, so, so that's when I. So that's so, so that's how I kind of got into comics, and then the, so the Matt other. Matt Wagner brought you in. Ma Matt that. Wagner brought me in, and then followed closely by Archie Goodwin, who also gave me a back cover quote for okay. the, for this London Start book, and he he and I talked about me doing something, and he was sort of making the 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 the, cha the, the change from Epic, going back to DC. Okay. So when that all happened, you know, eventually I got to do the Golden Age. Mm -hmm. But it was after like a couple of years of knowing him and, and, t and t talking through lots of ideas. And then while I was doing the Golden Age, he was like, well, you might as well do a Legends of the Dark Knight as well. Mm -hmm. So I, that was how I started working at DC. Hmm. And then I'd always been aware, looking at other, other you know, I'm, I'm an ambitious guy, you know, I wanted people to, to notice what I was doing. And I noticed that one of the ways that people have done it is taking a book that was close to cancellation or a character that people didn't care about and making him interesting. You know, mm -hmm. Daredevil was bi-monthly. It was almost going to be cancelled when Frank Miller took it over. Mm -hmm. um, Alan Moore and Swamp Thing. You know, that, that book was on the, on the skids and he took it over. Mm -hmm. And I had, this, I had this idea for Starman and, and you know, the big, the big inspiration really for that book is Tom White's. Hmm. Just his lyrics and mm -hmm. the, the, the way his, it makes me feel and I imagine, you know, Upper City and, and the sound of his music playing somewhere and this is back when he was, you know, playing on the, you know, he was more of a songs, songs, you know, before he started breaking glass and hitting right, bones right. on bits of metal. <laughs> um, so I had this idea, and then, and originally it was going to be Will, Will Payton, I assumed, you know, and, and, and I said, you know, can I take over this Starman character? And they said, well, we're going to kill him. Uh, so I was like, well, can I have the name then when? And, and, and I, I also knew from looking at DC, one of the reasons why Starman never worked is that there was never a lineage. There's a lineage in, with Green Lantern. There's sort of a lineage with Hawkman. That, oh, not so much, but Hawkman, definitely with um, with the Flash. So, so I knew that going in, setting that up was was the, uh, the other thing that I thought would help people to take an interest in the book and also collectibles because I was a, I am a, a, I love collecting. I used to be far, far more of a collector. Um, so adding that into, I, I knew that that was something that I could, you know, that, that, that's the other thing about comics. I think some writers. They're and this is something I learned from Grant Morrison from talking to him back when I was in England. They're afraid to give of themselves. They're afraid to be honest about um, and put a little piece of them in, in the comic books. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never been afraid of doing that. And I knew that that would be, that would be something else that would help the mm -hmm. book to, 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 uh, to, to get, get, get popularity. Uh -huh. it's, it's nice nowadays. Um, like when I, was, when I was writing Starman, I was writing it in a vacuum. And I knew there was about 25,000 people that bought the book because I, I could see the sales. Uh -huh. And that's why it was always published. It, it continued to make money. But in, if, it, you know, if the internet, I'm not, I, I, to this day, I wonder, would that have in, made, made, encouraged me to do it? Because I hear people, oh, I love this book and I grew up with it and everything else. Right. But I didn't, I didn't meet those people. You know, I, I used to do signings at the height of Sarmen and like four people would turn up. Uh -huh. So, so um, I wonder if with the internet, if that would have encouraged me or because there's so much negativity on the right, internet, right. it might have just completely soured me. And mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've no way of, of answering that, obviously. Have you had to deal with much negativity on the internet? Oh, yeah, with, um, mm -hmm. you know, with, uh, with Mon-El in Superman, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You know, when is this crap? You know, James Robinson, what a hack. He used to be a good writer, now he's not. <laughs> you know, I've heard, I've heard so everything. So you read all of it? Have you read enough of it? Well, I read some of it, you know, and after, and after I cried myself to sleep, you know, yeah. I... Um, you know, and, and, and you, you also realize that it's, it's a very vocal minority, uh -huh. and often it's that people would love to be doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, my, my argument is, well, if you think you can do better than me, then, then do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, um, it, it, but yeah, I, I, I try not to read it, but everybody does, right. you know. And, and um, it, th thankfully, you know, with Earth 2, it's a bit more positive. Cry for Justice was the one where I took a real hit. Mm -hmm. And originally, that was going to be an ongoing book. And, origi and I, I was thinking about it, like, God, originally, they were going to go hunting for Prometheus in different worlds. <laughs> And one of them was going to be a funny animal world. They were going to, it, was, it was the whole thing, but they were going to get lost in the past in an alternate world. And it was basically going to be this funny animal world with anamorphic tomahawk and his, and his <laughs> rangers. And it was going to be this light, happy book. And I was like, where the hell did that go? You know? <laughs> so, um, uh, so yeah, so that, that, that was one that where pe just people hated me for that book. And, and when, it, when it got an, an ISO nomination, mm -hmm. boy, oh boy, the fury of people, you know. <laughs> So, um, so how's it different though? Like doing Starman, not having to deal with the internet stuff, and then now being really in the thick of it. Does it change your process? I, well, no. You have to be very careful not to let it change your process, mm -hmm. and not to not to not to read too much, and not not to listen to it because it will make you second guess yourself, and you, you know, that's death. Right. You know, there was one writer who will remain nameless who took over a book at DC, and he's he's this is a legendary thing. Everyone everyone knows talks about it. And he's like, hey, I'm taking over such and such a book. He was, a, he was a, an, an author. It was, it was his first comic book work. Right, right. I believe I've interviewed him. Uh, and he, <laughs> he said, uh, to, to, he went on the online, hey, I'm writing this book. What stories do you want me to, t to write for you? Well, right, the right. worst thing you should do is ask comic fans what stories you want them. You, they, right, right. you know, you, comic, I believe comic fans want to be surprised and read new stuff. Right. So, um, so you can't let it affect you, but it, it, it's still... Sometimes it can, you know, and um, also on Twitter, I, I, I love Twittering. Some people follow me on Twitter, you know, and I say all these funny, outrageous things, which I, it's a good, it's very cathartic while I'm uh, writing to suddenly write some snide Twitter to, to, to Coca-Cola or whatever I, right. whatever I do. <laughs> but sometimes I get Twitters from like, God, this issue was crap or something, you know, and I was like, really? <laughs> you know, really? You had, to, you, you had to let me know like that? So you know, so they come at you directly. It's not oh, even yeah, just yeah, on there's no, <laughs> well, but 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 also, I don't, actually don't mind that so much because at least that's someone with you know to, to be on Twitter, your, your your information is up there. Mm -hmm. It's it's it, it's these people you know, Captain America thirty nine, mm -hmm. who's you know he's telling me he's insulting me and yet he's he doesn't have the courage to actually right. you know whereas if if it was like Dave Johnson of of Pittsburgh, uh -huh. then I, I know who the guy is, and I can at least I can respect that he his, his opinion, you know, as a, as one person to another. Right. But it doesn't it doesn't affect you, or you don't like how how do you block that from getting in your head when you're writing? Do you need to like go into you, internet detox you just, before you start writing? No, no, writing you just or? develop a, you know, Thicker after skin? twenty years, you know, you you just pick up a. You just get a thick skin, mm -hmm. and remember, for until it became too, too too labor intensive, I used to do I used to do the letters page personally of Starman. I did that for about fifty issues, mm -hmm. so, and it was it would take me like a week to do the letters page because mm -hmm. to read them all and you think about what they're you know and try and respond and everything else. But um, so I was used to because you know not every letter that comes in even then some of them would be would be not particularly, you know, they weren't happy with what I was did with this thing or that thing or what have right. you. So I was, I was already used to it. I think, you know, to be in any kind of creative medium, you have to have a thick skin. I mean, you, you, you make films, you know, and, and, and you do media. So you've, you know, you've encountered it too. You just have to keep going, mm -hmm. you know. Um, what else? Uh, the, the, the one thing I did get once, and I, f I felt terrible, honestly. Uh, I wrote an issue of, this, I, this, I wasn't even in the letters page for this. I wrote a three issue witchcraft, um, Mm -hmm. miniseries for Vertigo and in the final issue the villain gets castrated and the witches call him a sexless thing or something and I got this letter from a guy in Aust Australia who had been in an accident and lost his <laughs> testicles and he 
and it was a long letter de detailing, being really angry oh. with me for using that term and saying that he took testosterone shots oh, and geez. he was not a sexless thing and how dare I write. And I felt so <laughs> awful oh, about, about it. This poor, this poor guy, obviously he was upset about what happened to him and, was, you know, and I was upset for him. So um, that's, what, that's by way of nothing really, except it's an interesting this, story. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> Um, and what about uh, going through League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? That there was some hellfire. Well, that yeah, that was that was bad. I mean, what what happened with that was I wrote a original script, very like I said, completely different. Mm -hmm. And and it all took place. I mean, and these were the these were the things we we want you to keep the flavor of the comic. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem with the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is, and at the time the second series hadn't come out yet, The Martians. Mm -hmm. So it was, if you look at the actual comic book, the first four issues of that comic are the recruitment of the League. Mm -hmm. And that, in a film, is your first 30 pages. Mm -hmm. So then where do you go after that? And, and they, so they said, so we, we need you to flesh out the rest of it. We, need, we, we can't have Fu Manchu as the villain, because that's <laughs> racist. <laughs> and we want a young lead as well. Right, right. So, so that's why I put Tom Sawyer in it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the idea was, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with um, Mark Twain's writing, he, he wrote, you know, he didn't just write Tom Sawyer and Huckabee Finn, he wrote Tom Sawyer, Boy Detective, he wrote, he wrote uh, you know, so I was, and, and Tom Sawyer never aged, much like, mm -hmm. the, like a comic book character. Mm -hmm. So I felt it was fine to have him be whatever he was meant to be, 20s, in his early 20s, and be a Secret Service agent. It, 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 it felt like the kind of thing that Alan Moore would have done if he'd thought of it, mm -hmm. but I, I felt, personally. And the whole thing, you know, it starts in England, but then they end up in, in New York at the turn of the century, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Five Points and New York at that time and everything else. And the, the, the death ray, so to speak, that was the other thing is, we, you have to come with, a, with, a death, with a, a, a death ray that works, that feels right for the time, mm -hmm. but ha that, that would um, resonate in the present day. Mm -hmm. So I, at, at the time, you know, I was doing some research. First use of germ warfare was uh, in the American Civil War. So it already, it already existed. And then, you know, obviously in the First World War, which was, which was to come soon after the turn of the century, there was mustard gas and everything else. And then there was that saran gas attack in the, in the Japanese subway. Hmm. And then there was also that woman that got like a flesh-eating bacteria. So I sort of put that together, and, it, and that was the thing. It was, and it was like, well, the villain is going to destroy New York. How can he destroy New York? Mm -hmm. And it, at, the t at, the, at the time that the film was set, um, they, had, they hadn't laid the tracks, but the tunnels for the subway had been, had been drilled out. Mm -hmm. So they were going to pump the gas in through the tunnels, and it was going to come out all over the place and kill loads of people. Mm -hmm. And then 9-11 happened. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously there hasn't been touch touch wood, a lot of terrorist attacks in America. But at the time, people didn't know, people, everyone was scared, and no one knew like, if the next attack was gonna be in a week or a month. Mm -hmm. And they said, we can't have a gas in a subway. Because if, if this movie gets made, and it comes at, the week it comes out, there's a gas attack, oh, we will lose our shirts. <laughs> so you've gotta come up with a new thing. But by then, Connery was on board, uh -huh. and the director was on board. So then suddenly, a script that I wrote pretty much in, in a vacuum by myself, and this is what got Connery excited about the, about, about the project. Suddenly, every, because Connery is involved, every producer is coming out of the woodwork and development oh, right. executive, all with opinions. And I, so I, I had to do this, to, I, I rewrote this thing, you know, I don't know if anyone saw the film, it, it isn't a good film. Um, <laughs> but when you go into it, you, you, you have this optimism, this hope that it mm -hmm. will, you know? And then, then the editor, then, the, then the, the director quit, he didn't edit the film. And they were like, oh, we have this Victorian thing, you know. And they, they, there was a lot more like risque dialogue and there was a lot of, you know, uh, uh, what I consider to what I do, which is write good dialogue. Mm -hmm. And, and the, it was the same time that X-Men 2 came out. So the Fox executives at the time said, we want, what we want to do is turn this into a Victorian X-Men. Now, you can, <laughs> now, if someone, <laughs> but if someone says that to a writer at, 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 a, at a, an early point, right. he can sure. do that. Mm -hmm. But you can't, you know, right. at the, at, in the editing stage, cut a, cut, <laughs> cutting out risque dialogue and, right. you know, jazzing it up. It, 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 so that's that. That also made it into a mess, you know. Oh, so yeah, it, yeah. it was the only movie I. I, I mean, I, I got a, other jobs after that, thank God. God, but it's the only <laughs> thing that I ever got made. The director's never directed again. Oh, wow. Connery quit quit making films. <laughs> it was. It was. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it wasn't just like this is my last film because I'm I'm kind of done with filmmaking. He's like. 
I, after making League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, I will never work in, <laughs> in film again. And um, I don't know. Can I swear on this? In this is, am I allowed to swear? Or I not? guess. Why not? Well, <laughs> so there's a word that in England we use all the time. It's, it, it's like saying shit. It's like you break, your, you, you break your shoelace and you go, oh, you cunt. It, and I've, I've <laughs> well, never once, that. I have never <laughs> once ever used that word directed at a woman. In, in England, you tend to call, call your friends, like men, mm -hmm. a cunt, or in anonymous stuff, when you, when you smash your chin on a, your, 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 your shin on a chair or something, you know. Right. It's like oof. Yeah, Same like thing, oof, right? yeah. Okay. So, so Connery, is, <laughs> as, at the end of it, he, he, he had one, he, he finished filming a week before um, there was some other stuff that had to be filmed. So his, his, his final speech is, well, I've, uh, I don't pity, you have to work with this cunt for another week. You know, that was his, <laughs> and the director standing right there. So that was how badly they hated each other. Wow. So anyway, it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a, a, a good film, but uh, it was an experience. I got to, I got to go to Prague. I, mm -hmm. you know, used to, because Connery didn't like the director and the director had no interest in, in actors. He was mm -hmm. one of these guys that said, you know, the actors can direct themselves. Mm -hmm. So I would go in in the morning and sit with, with Sean Connery and go over the dialogue and stuff like that. So that was exciting. That's cool. So you were on set. Oh, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. So that was, that was very exciting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and a, a rewarding experience. I just wish that, you know, right. it had been a better film. But of everyone who worked on that film, you were the only one that had to come back to comics and be like... Well, that's true. <laughs> and the worst... The, the, I, I know, I know, I know. Believe me. And the, the, worst, the worst thing... And it was nice that Brian Singer actually made a point of saying this. I did a panel at San Diego and it was comic book movies. Mm -hmm. And it was the writer and Brian Singer from X-Men 2, something else that was well received and me. <laughs> so everybody else is, is, you know, yes, it's great. We're making great movies, great superhero movies. And then I'm at the end like, uh, well, not all of us are. <laughs> so, and Brian said, you know, like it took great, it took, took great courage on my part. And I, I thought I was quite brave to even go do that panel, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I felt that people hated that movie, mm -hmm. you know? And, and then I, the movie I did, that I wrote and directed, Comic Book Villains. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that was made for a million dollars. So in 20 days so it it, it has it, it's 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 a low budget movie but because there was you know there was a fire there was a a, a, a car going into the water every it, that 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 normally would be all you shot that day right but with with this script it was that and also five pages of dialogue mm -hmm. so it was it was a, you know the time thing was the problem but what i thought i was telling was the idea of not letting any hobby become so over, overwhelming that you lost sight of the real world. Mm -hmm. But what comic fans got from it was I hated comic fans. Oh. So I got criticized for that too. Oh, wow. I, 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 it didn't even occur to me that they wouldn't, they wouldn't say, you know, I, I have the character at the end say, I still enjoy comics. I just now live a, live a life. It, you know, the only, it isn't that all I do is read comic books. Right, right. And they were like, oh my God, you? very, very <laughs> upset. So, so my two my two films have both been <laughs> <laughs> less than less than uh, less than uh, six, uh, uh, critically enjoyed by people. Mm -hmm. um, but now, so now you're on Earth Two. So one of the things that's been buzzed about in Earth Two is the gay Green Lantern. Right, Alan Scott. So um, where did that come from? How did that come? That into came that came from, you know, I live in San Francisco. My my wife and I, are two of our best friends, were gay couple. You know, I, I have loads of gay friends in San Francisco. And by Alan Scott being young, it meant that there could be no Obsidian and Jade, who are his children, and, and, and Obsidian was gay. So, and it, you know, and there were so few gay characters, it's not like I have this gay agenda, but there are so few gay characters, I felt, I was like, wow, it's a shame, you know, one of these iconic characters is going away. And then it occurred to me, why not make Alan Scott gay and just make him this, this, this cool guy, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and you know, obviously, uh, for some reason, Brazil, like th these people in Brazil were like on Twitter, were like saying things like, you know, uh, I went out, uh, I went to uh, Vegas, and uh, you know what you do in Vegas, you smoke cigarettes, you drink, and you you just have a great time, you know. I don't even smoke, by the way, but I was smoking cigarettes in Vegas, <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, I came back and I said like, oh my liver has my liver's my liver's killing me or something, 
And so someone in Brazil, your liver is, it's God's punishment for what you've done to Alan Scott. That's true. Was that, so, <laughs> so um, and, and there, were, there were other people from Brazil. For some reason, that really upset people in Brazil. But they also, <laughs> but they also misreported it. So there was pictures of Ryan Reynolds. Oh, amazing. So it became a whole yeah. mess in there. But, um, but, what, but what it was was, so, so I, I pitched that. Wait, to Ryan Reynolds is gay? Are we making news here? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> um, uh, I pitched it to Dan. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was uh, we, were, we were actually discussing the atom. And he was like, you know, the atom, the atom, the atom. And I was like, oh, and I want to make Alan Scott gay. And he's like, uh, okay, fine. <laughs> and then we, and then we went, and, oh, but, about the atom. And that's how much he, that's how little he thought about it. You know, and that's how little I thought it would be. I didn't think huh. it would be a big deal. And then he mentioned it by chance at a panel in England. Uh -huh. Just absolutely by chance that a green lantern. And this didn't have to go up the chain or anything? It was just between you guys being like, yeah, sure, Yeah, yeah, whatever. yeah. It was, it, well, after it all came out, it had to go. That, that then went, it went up the chain. Yeah, they were like, "What right, the right. hell right. are you guys th doing?" You know, right, right, right. and 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 actually, Jeff had to go in and discuss it with uh, the the people at Warner Brothers to explain to them there are lots of Green Lanterns and it's just one. Of, <laughs> it's just one of them. You know, they, they, they don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> That's amazing. But it, but it, it uh, but uh, but you know, it would all it had all kind of happened by it was the the. the the, it was like uh, closing the barn door after the horses bolted. It, it was all, right, right. The, the, it had all been done by then, so there was not really anything they could do. Mm -hmm. But it, I, I got a GLAD nomination, so it's, it ended up being a good, you know, people, it was well, very well perceived. And even like, uh, what's it, what they called, Million Moms? Mm -hmm. They started a Facebook page to, to, to try and shut down, to try and get uh, Earth 2 stopped or whatever, whatever they wanted. And people, people, they, uh, people shut down that Facebook page by by yeah. negative by saying you know you're blah blah whatever you say to those many moms. Right, right, but right. it was so overwhelmingly positive for was Alan Scott that they that they took down the page, and and mainly it's been it's been very very positive. And I think I, I think, you know, I'm not gay. I think having a non-gay guy write that character, it 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 doesn't feel like a gay person wanting to put their you know stamp on it. It's just uh -huh. it's just presenting a you know it like like. A, 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 a person from another nationality or something, you know, it's just an mm -hmm. aspect of their personality. I think I was the right person to do that character. Mm -hmm. I really do. And I love Alan Scott too. So that I think was important too. The, 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 the person that wrote that, the, a gay Alan Scott, had to love Alan Scott before he decided to make him gay. Mm -hmm. so, so that was that. So are there rules about what you can uh, do in terms of telling the, his story? Do you have to clear Not really. anything? No, or? I mean, no, I mean, it, it, so this. I mean, it's interesting to me that you can just be in a meeting talking about the atom and be like, "Oh, by the way, I'm I'm doing him gay and well, doing Green Lantern." Gay. Well, this is the thing: <laughs> is that with the new Fifty Two and especially with Earth Two, they do want diversity, mm -hmm. and you know, as as you uh, you know, as you'll see, there are like what I didn't say, Captain Steel. When you when you meet Captain Steel in a in a issue thirteen of of a, he's Filipino. Mm -hmm. And it, and it occurred to me like there was a huge comic book fan base of Filipinos mm -hmm. in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and yet there isn't one Filipino. I can't think of a Filipino character in comics. Right. So so you know it, trying to make this sort of justice society of Benetton. I like to think of it as you know, mm -hmm. but it's fun to do, and and I I, I, I like it. You like when when you meet um, Doctor Midnight, he's going to be Scottish. You know, I'm going to try and make make this international cast. So, so having a gay character, you know, uh, it's just part of that diversity. So they definitely, you know, are very for that. I mean, they're, you know, they're a, co they're a company from New York, from New York. They're, you know, they're, they're mm -hmm. very cool about that stuff. Mm -hmm. But know. it doesn't have to, but it eventually went up the chain after it was announced or? When it was, when it, when it, when it made a... the news, when, when Dan just made a, an offhand remark and it got uh -huh. blown up, mm -hmm. then it made the news and then suddenly, Warner Brothers is like, "What? You know, one of our characters. You've made right. one of our characters gay, and they thought like we've made you know there's right, one right. there's the one Green, Green Lantern, Lantern and we've made him gay. Yeah, yeah. So 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 there was some exp explaining to do, but ultimately you know it was fine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and then um, I might you know at some point he's going to have a romance. You know, he's still getting over the the the, the loss of his lover, but eventually I'll and I'll handle that in a 
mature and not I don't mean mature in like a vertigo way I mean in a sort of in a in a, in a sophisticated <laughs> in an 18 and over in, in, in a sophisticated um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. in a in a sophisticated manner you know and mm -hmm. and, I, and I, I think it'll be successful awesome uh, do we have any questions for Mr. Robinson uh, in the front I've always been curious about the Freddy versus Jason script that I heard you wrote oh well I wrote that with David Goya for, uh, it was for Rob Botin, who is not even in the business anymore. He sells real estate. But he was a, um, a very, very well-regarded well effects, um, special effects guy. Mm -hmm. And it was going to be his first, his first movie. However, that guy, I, 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 I shouldn't say that because I could get sued. He's just, <laughs> he's just, very, oh, he's just very, un, he's just, he was just a, a, a wacky guy. <laughs> so we we wrote this script and he didn't like it, basically. Long story short, he didn't like it. Made a big fuss, and as opposed to doing rewrites that we didn't want to do, we just quit. Mm -hmm. And they got someone else to do it. And uh, was it made? They made a, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So eventually, but by that point, he wasn't attached. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I said about about this director to what to the guys at, at New Line, I said your your problems are just starting on this. Don't mm -hmm. don't think us leaving is the end of the problems. And I was right, you know. And now he's sells real estate somewhere. I don't think he lives in Hollywood now. He lives in Florida or something. Mm -hmm. So that's it. What are some high points of that script? Uh, the the high point we were l laughing as we were writing it is a moment where to defeat Freddy, they have these kids have to like save the life of Jason who's just drowned somehow. So this one guy removing his mask and having to give CPR to Jason <laughs> with the you know and he's like <laughs> it, it was it was so funny when we were writing it. So that was a good moment. And I, I forget, honestly, I wrote that script, uh, I thought like over 10 years ago. So, I just, so you didn't even know that this movie got made? No, I forgot. So then you don't know that they actually used that, that scene in the Freddy vs. Jason movie? Oh, really? Watch it. Oh. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> wow, I should have... Uh, Call your agent, dude. <laughs> uh, over here. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, can you just repeat the question? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, so the question was that uh, from the Golden Age, there was a, the, the character Our Man, which, which I, I had in, in the Golden Age, uh, what the, the, the aspect of the character that I, I, I dealt with in, the, in that series was his addiction to, A, the pill, and really his addiction to the life that, that it, it afforded him. And was this something that I wanted to go back to? Um, I don't know that it's something I want to go back to. Uh, there will be an Hour Man in, in Earth 2 eventually. And I have a different kind of internal turmoil planned for him. I can't say what it is. I, he's, I, I love Hour Man. The problem with Hour Man is that, like, one of the things I want in this book is every, every, every power has some kind of cost. You don't just get powers and it's, everything's cool, you know? So, so, um, yes, yes. So, so, um, like if you, if, if, if you had a, a if you had a, a, a Miracle pill and you, and you could take it for one hour of the day and you were, you were our man, but then the rest of the time you're just you, that you don't really pay much of a price. You know, it's, you're still, it's still nice to be you, you know. So the idea that he, that he, there's, there's a, there's a price you pay for taking the Miracle pill, or the life that he has when he's not taking it is not a very good life, is, is where I'm gonna be going with that character when I, when I return to him at some point. Cool, I'm sorry, we don't have any more time. So James Robinson, thank you so oh, much. Oh, okay. Yep. Thank, th th thank, thank you everybody for being here, this has been great. Thank you. Thank you.